What's up guys, it's Shin Smith. Okay, today this video. Oplan Exodus, the Sub-44 documentary. Wow, Exodus everyone. Sounds really serious topic, isn't it? At the moment, I don't know about the, you know, what the Sub-44 meaning and what's going on. Is it something related to uh, history or modern issues these days in the Philippines? I don't know at the moment. I have absolutely no idea. Anyway, judging by the title, must be serious topic, so I should be serious. No worries, I can be serious. So, now, let's get into it. If you enjoy the content, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new here. So, let's get into it. Okay, noted. 10 p.m., night of January 24, oh, 2015. Recently, just seven years ago. About 390 SAF commandos are on their way to an unfamiliar territory. So SAF is some military from Philippines? National military? To carry out a classified mission. A mission which the SAF are the most capable of. Mm. The Special Action Force or SAF is an elite unit of the Philippine National Police. I see. The members were chosen among a number of participants who had undergone a tough selection procedure. The qualified members then received special and intense training to handle operations such as raids, hostage rescue, and counter-terrorism. I know Philippines force, uh, Philippines military is strong. You know, they have the best shooting team in the world. I've I watched the video uh, telling about the you know Philippines shooting team is the best. Yeah, so yeah, must be this SAF team strong. Must be strong. Their involvement to end coup d'état attempts in the late 1980s and the Zamboanga siege in 2013 are just some of the many accomplishments of the Special wow. Action Force. Didn't know that. Months before this mission. An intelligence report, allegedly from the United States, revealed that two of the most wanted terrorists in several countries are currently hiding in the marshlands of Mamasapano, Maguindanao, Philippines. So is something related to bin Laden or like Al-Qaeda Al issue related? The objective of the SAF is to infiltrate and capture terrorists Abdul Basit Usman <laughs> Sounds like very, how to say, name of Al Qaeda, the name of a member from Al Qaeda. <laughs> Am I correct? And the main target, one of FBI's most wanted terrorists, Zulkifli bin Hir, alias Marwan. Marwan is a Malaysian terrorist who specializes in bomb making. Wow, crazy. Together with his group, Marwan was involved in a number of attacks and plots in Southeast Asia including a reported plot targeting the Pope during his visit in the My Philippines. Gosh. Fortunately, man. it was averted. He is a terrible man. This mission, however, was not new to the SAF. Efforts to capture Marwan can be dated back to 2010, really? wherein nine consecutive attempts have been made, but none were successful. Most missions were aborted, and in some cases, Marwan was able to escape. Wow, must be tough mission. Especially they have to save, you know, citizens' uh, life. So that is a fast priority, right? So which makes uh, them this mission more difficult. So yeah, tough, tough. But this time, officials responsible of the operation were confident that the outcome would be different. With this confidence in mind, the SAF commandos prepares as they get closer to the site to carry out the mission. A mission that will forever be remembered by Filipinos. Oh, really? A mission named Oplan Exodus. So you guys of course know about this story, right? This is my first time. 
also, this is gonna be like a history of Philippines, right? Oh, glad to know this fact. I like this animation. It's good, actually. Divided as special action companies, the SAF commandos will follow a planned route and will position at assigned locations on the map. The 84th SAC or Seaborne, which is composed of 41 commandos, is the team assigned to capture Marwan and his man. They will be the first one to advance and will control the movement of other sacks. Just behind Seaborn, the 55th sack, composed of 36 commandos, will become the blocking force, which will serve as the primary support and security for Seaborn. The remaining sacks, which are composed of more than 300 SAF commandos, will serve as support groups, securing the exits of both sacks. Meanwhile, the 43rd SAC will position along the drop-off point, securing both ends of the highway. Blocking them, right? The plan was estimated to be done at a specific time. However, this was unlikely. Oh my god. As the terrain leading to the targets was a huge obstacle for the commandos. The marshland was covered with vast areas of cornfields and deep rivers. Moreover, it was not their territory. Throughout the marshland, several armed groups are situated at certain areas, the largest of which are the BIFF and the MILF. The BIFF is a militant organization based in Mindanao, mm. seeking to have an independent Islamic state for the Muslim minority. I know, they have that kind of issue. I know that, yeah. It's famous, right? Yeah. Is Mindanao still really dangerous place? Is it? I hope this kind of issue is totally solved. You know, uh, since the president of um, that who, who was that 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 that, that Duterte, yeah, he he killed, he tried to kill the bad people, all, all of bad people, right? So hope it's gonna be okay. Meanwhile, the MILF, also a group in Mindanao is an organization which seeks to separate from the central government and have an autonomous region for the Moro people. Fortunately, the government and the MILF are currently in an ongoing peace talks, prohibiting both parties from doing aggressive actions, basically a ceasefire. Mm, agreements. However, due to the mission being classified, the MILF were not informed of the operation. Something will happen. At about 11 p.m. of January 24, Upland Exodus commenced. Wow, exciting! The 41 commandos of Seaborn, led by Superintendent Raymond Traine, advances. The remaining special action companies are waiting for the right time to depart as their movements dependent on the movement of Seaborn. Mm. However, due to an unfamiliar terrain and the strong current of the rivers, uh, time, Seaborn right? did minor changes to the planned route. Uh, I see. This caused a delay in the departure of the 55th SAC and the remaining support groups. It should be estimated since it's not a familiar area. Then, what will happen? Oh my god. It's bloody all the time. Is that the name of place?
approaching them. Oh, sounds so real. This time, so makes me so you know scary. Whoa, what happened? Oh, some people. My killed. one's hut was covered with improvised traps. Oh, my god. Some bomb were buried in the ground. They expected the attack, surprise attack. Meanwhile, hidden from sight, Abdul Basit Usman escapes. Mm. Yeah, they expected the Unfortunately, raid. Unfortunately, the I gunshots guess. awoke the armed groups in the area. Gun sounds so real. Oh, someone hit. Seaborn had successfully neutralized one of the world's most dangerous men. Mm. Good work. Without delay, they took a DNA sample, and a picture was taken. Oh, they're so professional. They made it, right? A SAF Good commando work. then sent a text message to the command saying Mike Wan, bingo, which meant that the target was neutralized. Mm -hmm. Triumph was felt among the commandos outside as they've heard the word bingo. But that triumph won't last. Oh. As Seaborn attempts to unite with the 55th SAC for the exit, I guess trap. Yeah. Oh my. They were already surrounded. Oh my god. <laughs> Meanwhile, the 55th SAC, which was delayed for hours, attempts to reach their designated waypoint. Uh, but can't make it right on time. They still don't know, you know, Seabone was surrounded, right? Uh, I don't think this is a ride. As they were navigating through the cornfields of Barangay Tucanalipao, they heard men shouting around the area. Immediately, they formed a defensive perimeter. Across the river, they saw MILF members gathering near the bridge. The 55th SAC waited. Their only cover was the cornfield and the darkness. But not for long. Oh yeah, sunrise. I don't think this is alright. Ah. As dawn breaks, the 77 commandos of the 55th SAC and Seaborn 
are to be surrounded by over 1,000 combined members of the MILF, BIFF, and other private armed groups. At the location of Seaborn, it was a fight for survival. Thinking they were unmatched by the unknown number of armed groups shooting at them, they decided to retreat to the river and took a different exit route to avoid the enemies. Yeah, no choice. But then again, they got surrounded. Oh my god. During this time, the SAF commandos of the 55th SAC and Seaborn continuously called for reinforcements. This led the remaining special action companies to advance, but then eventually retreated as they were met with gunfire. So they didn't expect how big they are? How big the, the enemy were? Oh my god, this was the worst case. I, I wonder why I didn't expect if worse comes to the worst case. This was the worst situation, oh my god. Crazy, man. At the same time, the situation reached SAF Director Hetulio Napenas Jr., the commander who oversees the operation. At about 6 a.m., Napenas sends a message to the Army's 6th Infantry Division commander informing him about the operation. However, according to the commander, he did receive a message but it did not mention the need for reinforcements. This was a wrong Fortunately, order. The said commander, Major General Pangilinan, sent out a reinforcement team after details of the ongoing firefight have circulated. Moreover, Pangilinan orders the Brigade General of the AFP to notify the MILF of the situation, which again was in an ongoing peace talks with the government. At about 8.30 a.m., the army arrived. According to the army, they saw the remaining SAF commandos just sitting on the highway. Oh, yeah. The army then asked for coordinates from two SAF commanders to locate the 55th SAC in Seaborn. Unfortunately, they don't know. Mm. Critical situation. After figuring out the location, the army advances. But the remaining SAF members reportedly refused to go with them. According to a report, there was no command telling the SAF what to do. Oh my god, they are confusing. At about 9 a.m., the army received a call from Seaborn, informing them that they are on a hill in Barangay Tucanalipao, surrounded yeah. by the MILF. Oh my god. However, AFP Chief of Staff General Katapang ordered his men to not engage the MILF because they don't want to endanger the ongoing peace process. Why don't you save them? Oh my... So, can you believe that? He must be accused, right? The army then proceeded to extract them. But along the way, they were also met with gunfire and forced them to retaliate. Oh, it takes so long. This fact is it because I was young? I think Japanese, very few Japanese knows about this fact. This is critical, critical issue. 
terrible. The firefight lasted for several hours until the army decided to deploy white phosphorus at about 5.30 p.m. The white phosphorus are used for cover and as markers for the artillery team to calculate their location, minimizing the risk of a friendly fire. Oh, must be scary, right? But the story goes deeper than it seemed. Oh my god, still keep going this Investigations story? Investigations done after the incident uncovered something behind the people responsible yeah, of, course. of the operation. It was revealed that former president and also the commander-in-chief Benigno Aquino III oh. allowed his close friend former PNP chief Alan Purisima to participate and allegedly gave him control of the operation. However, the said PNP chief was suspended at that time currently being investigated for an alleged graft case. Still? Even so, now? Aquino entrusted him the operation, mm. along with the SAF director, Hetulio Napenas Jr. Moreover, it was reported that Deputy Director General Leonardo Espina was supposed to be the one who had the authority to oversee the entire operation. But due to an unknown reason, he was excluded and was only informed on the morning of January 25. What the hell? He must With be accused! With a number of revelations being brought to light, the officials responsible of the operation fell into a blame game, taking turns in blaming it one another. It happens all the time, right? In regards to the MILF, questions arise as to why Marwan was near if not within their territory. During the Senate probe on the incident, Senate Majority Leader Alan Peter Cayetano fired questions directed to the MILF, asking about their alleged role in providing a haven for the terrorists. But all of these were denied by the MILF, insisting that Marwan took refuge within the BIFF territory. This was supported by Chief Peace Advisor Teresita Deles saying that the MILF already ended ties with the terrorists. In sure? a different investigation, autopsy reports done by the PNP revealed that most members received a fatal shot to the head. This can be done by the snipers. However, this also suggests that some were shot up close. This theory was confirmed when a video circulated through social media oh. showed a brutal killing of one SAF commando up close. Uh, must be brutal killing. Besides the Crazy. investigation done by the government, the MILF conducted their own. According to their investigation, the MILF lost 17 of their members and three civilians had died. In regards to the Upland Exodus, the MILF said that they were not aware of the operation. And even with the ceasefire prohibiting both parties from doing aggressive actions, they said that they were not able to identify the SAF commandos and claimed that the said commandos fired at them first. Yeah, of course they These that. claims led people to debate if this was a case of a misencounter or just pure massacre. How can you prove it? That's a really difficult issue. The Senate, which condemned the manner of how the SAF members were killed, labeled the incident as massacre. Mm. But the massacre. Commission on Human Rights chairperson disagrees with them, stating that categorizing the incident as a massacre is excessive. Is it? Killing 100 people is not massacre? Excessive? That was just a self-defense right action? She's saying that? That's crazy, man. Are still people discussing about this issue? Still not solved? This is a critical issue in the Philippines. Wow, I didn't know that. Hmm. That's kind of a relief. Mm. 
Things are getting better. Kino, please. Okay. Mm. Of course. Including an eight-year-old girl. <sighs> Crazy. The tragic events of January 25, 2015, cannot and will not be forgotten by the Filipino people. Yeah, it shouldn't be forgotten. During that day, families lost a father a brother, a son, and a hero. Oh my God. I'm Thus, so honored questions and outrage remain. Who was at fault? Who is to be blamed? And has justice already been given? Difficult question, isn't but it? But one thing is certain and will surely be remembered. The bravery and sacrifice of the fallen yes. 44. I see, that's why it's called the Sub-44. Now I get it, totally. 44 of heroes from the South. Wow, I'm sh so honored of them. They should be respected. Yeah, they are hero of Philippines. First of all, rest in peace, uh, the South 44 members and the casualties by this attack. I was in many wars from histories and there were many casualties and in this incident the number of casualties is comparatively small but thinking that you know it's peaceful it's safe uh, these days I'm so surprised that there is still such a dangerous place in the world especially Philippines where I usually go so that was serious topic Anyway, uh, what's going on uh, the Mindanao, Mindanao area? Is it still a dangerous place? Is, is there some terrorists exist there? I hope things are getting better. I don't really like the way of President Duterte, the president right now in the Philippines, because he kills people, he kills bad people, right? I don't really like that way, but I think things are getting better at least because of him. Yeah. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you like it. If you do, make sure to like button and subscribe, please. So, mata aimashou.